for today's video, I'm going to be doing a very in-depth talk through tutorial on how to apply contour, blush, highlight, and baking your face. Basically all the steps to achieve that flawless face that we all see all over Instagram and all the celebrity makeup artists are doing on all the celebrities. I'm going to take you through every single step. I'm going to give you the do's and the don'ts, the why's and the why nots. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so that you can see my fist. All right, so at this point I have primed my skin and I have on a sheer to medium coverage foundation right now. You can put on any foundation, it does not matter. Whatever you love, it can be sheer, it can be full coverage, it can be matte, it can be dewy. Whatever foundation you love, just slap it on your skin and then we can move on. So I am going to apply concealer on camera because that is part of this entire process. And the reason being is because depending the technique that you wanna to use to do your makeup that day, you are going to wanna change the color of your concealer. So for instance, if I'm just going to put on some mascara, a sheer foundation and some concealer. I'm gonna use a concealer that's only one shade lighter than my foundation or maybe even the same shade as my foundation. On a day like today when we are gonna do full beat and we are gonna do every single step, the whole jazz routine, a full face glam look, I'm going to go a couple shades lighter with my concealer, maybe in between two to four shades lighter. And the reason being is as you will see throughout this video, my concealer color is going to change and you're going to be happy that you have on a lighter concealer because the end look is going to be very structured and defined and that's what this entire thing is all about to get like that flawless face. So I'm going to grab the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Concealer. This is my absolute favorite concealer and that is because it doesn't crease underneath the eyes, especially with the way that I'm going to set it and because of the fact that it's very hydrating and I am definitely dry in this area so I want a more hydrating concealer. If you are more oily and you have a really big issue with stuff creasing, I would also recommend the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. It was one of my ride or dies for years. It's just a little bit too dry on me, I've noticed. So I'm gonna be using the shade Light Warm and I am going to just use this stick and apply a line under here, a line down the side of the nose, and a line here. I'm gonna do the same over here. Yes, honey, we are gonna look cute during this process. I am also going to apply a cross on the chin, a line right here, right there, and right down the center of the nose. All right, so I'm just going to pick up a damp sponge and I'm going to begin to blend this out. I personally love, love blending out my concealer with a damp sponge and it's also gonna come in handy when it comes time to bake the face. I personally think that a damp sponge, whether it's a beauty blender or like a different brand, I think a damp sponge blends out concealer better than anything else in my opinion. Like the past year and a half, I've been so loyal to using a damp beauty blender because I just think it looks so flawless underneath the eyes. And what I love so much about using a damp sponge to apply the concealer is that you're pressing it into the skin. As opposed to when you're using a brush, you're like dragging like this. And not only is it like more gentle on the under eye area, but I love that it's pressing the concealer into the skin, not to mention the moisture will pick up any excess concealer that you have. So if you applied way too much and you were way too generous, your beauty blender will pick up the excess so that it doesn't get cakey on your under eye. Okay, and then of course, we're just going to blend everything else out as well. Adding the highlight to the center of the face is just gonna make everything look more natural. I always have to put it in quotations because let's get real, there's nothing natural about this look. But in the end of all of this, it is going to look so much more put together and natural-esque as opposed to just having a highlight here and then nothing in the center of the face. You wanna bring the center of the face and the under eye together so that everything kind of matches and looks in sync. I miss sync. Such a good band. Now that we have applied the concealer on the under eye area in the center of the face, I'm going to grab my translucent powder. And this is the RCMA No Color Translucent Powder. I absolutely love this powder. It's my favorite because I am dry. If you are oily, I would really recommend the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. It is absolutely amazing. I used it for so long until I discovered this one. And this one is just so much better on dry skin. So I'm just gonna put some of this powder into the cap right here so that I can just work with it straight out of the cap just make a total mess, no big deal. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same damp beauty blender that we use for the under eye and I'm going to dip it into this cap directly into that translucent powder. This scared the crap out of me the first time that I did it, I'm not gonna lie, because you're always taught you can't mix water with powder, you can't mix liquids and powders, like they need to be done separately, you know? And so taking a damp beauty blender and dipping it into powder, I'm like, don't put that on my face! Like it's like terrifying, but I promise you this works. If you wanna set that under eye concealer like nobody's business, try this trick. It will 
will change your life. There are different options for you if you do not want to use the damp beauty blender and translucent powder method. You could do something like this and use just like an under eye powder to set it. You could use something like the MAC Pro Emphasize, which comes in a bunch of different shades for the under eye area depending on your skin tone and that's on maccosmetics.com. And then this right here is the Anastasia Banana Powder. I love using these two together and separately for my under eyes, but for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to show you this method because this, in my personal opinion, will make that under eye stay in place all day long. It doesn't matter what you're doing, your under eye area is not going to move. So I'm going to go ahead, take this damp beauty blender, grab a little bit more because I've been shaking it around, and what I'm gonna do is just tap it directly on the under eye area. And I love this powder so much because the Laura Mercier A translucent powder, like not to sound like a hater or anything on me because I have dry under eyes. It just makes that under eye feel like so crepey when I smile. I'm like, ah, ah, like I feel like I can like have a trouble smiling because it makes that under eye area so dry. Whereas the RCMA col no color powder that I'm using right now doesn't do that. It does not feel dry on the skin. You're not going to want to wipe because then you'll make a mess of your makeup. Just press directly into the skin the entire time. You wanna look up and really make sure that you're getting on the under eye because that's where we all crease and just press, 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 dab, dab, dab. Bring it right there on the side of the nose, down, and there you go. You do not need to bring this down all the way to here. Sorry, I keep looking at my viewfinder to see my face. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I'm still in focus. But you do not need to bring the translucent powder all the way down here because this isn't highlighting or anything. You've already done that with the concealer. This is just simply setting where you would typically crease. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly set my entire face with a face powder. You do not have to do this. If you're crazy dry or if you haven't found a powder that you love or if you just like going in directly with powders over top of your cream foundation, I did that for years and years and years. But I'm just going to set my face really quick so that you guys can get the entire like full demo for those of you who do set your face. I am using the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Powder Foundation. I absolutely love this stuff like more than life. I just discovered it recently and it has become like an absolute staple in my collection. I also love the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Press Powder. So beautiful. That one is way more affordable if you're looking for something that's a little bit easier on your wallet. Now have foundation, concealer, we have our under eye area set and we have our face set. So every Everything is like good to go, right? So now at this point, this is when we're gonna begin actually the baking, the contouring, the highlighting, and all that jazz. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a ridiculous amount of translucent powder and I am going to really get it on that beauty blender. And I'm going to literally go directly in under my eyes and just stamp. And you want it to be as thick as possible, and I will explain why. I look like a psychopath right now. So I'm sure some of you right now are thinking, okay, what is the difference between setting your under eye area and baking your under eye area? And I will tell you, the difference is when you set your under eye area, that's all you're doing. You're just setting your under eye and you're moving along with your day. When you bake your under eye area, you are making that bitch bulletproof. That is the difference. Drag queens have been using this technique forever. We basically, glamour makeup takes everything from the drag world. You wanna know how to do good makeup? Go interview a queen, because seriously, that's where all of this stuff comes from. Because drag queens get on stage, they perform their under they're hot lights, they're dancing, they are, they are working, and they need their makeup to stay in place. They need their makeup to not move, they need it to be perfect through sweat, through dancing, through the hot lights, through everything. And so they came up with this technique a long, long, long time ago and we stole it from them. Something that I thought was so freaking cool when I heard this fact and I had to share it with you is the reason that it is called baking or cooking in the first place is because when you apply a ton of translucent powder to the skin, that area of the face basically can't breathe. And what ends up happening is your body temperature, which is typically around 98.6 degrees, give or take, comes through and gets trapped between the face and the translucent powder and it literally cooks the concealer, cooks the foundation, cooks the makeup, and becomes bulletproof. It is the coolest thing in the world. So when you think about it like that, you are literally cooking your face at 98.6 degrees. Turn that oven on, 98.6, and let's get cooking. If you want to bake any other areas of the face, you can go ahead and do so. I personally like to just do the under eye area when I do this method because I don't want to make the other areas of my face too matte and I really don't have an issue with other areas moving or not looking really nice. But a lot of people like to bake the chin as well because of the fact that your chin can really tend 
to kind of break up and the reason being is because a lot of times you'll rest your hand on your chin you'll be like this you'll do this you'll hug people and your makeup will just come off on your chin so if you want to bake your chin that is a very common thing to do <laughs> damn girl i'm looking so cute right now all right so now that our face is cooking we are going to move on to contour and honestly contouring can be very overwhelming because there's so many products out there there's so many brushes out there there's so many different opinions out there some people say that if you're going to contour you absolutely have to use a contouring powder that is a cool tone. I'm going to argue with that. I do not think that a contour powder needs to be a cool tone. Actually, I know that it doesn't have to be because there are some people out there that if they put on a cool tone powder on their face, it's going to look like you've been outside playing in the dirt. That's just how it happens. You immediately look muddy and gray and it doesn't work. Some people need a more neutral color. Some people need a warmer color. It just depends on your skin tone. I will say that overall, I think the Benefit Hula Bronzer is a really beautiful color for contour. It's a nice neutral. It doesn't have too much red or too much gray in it and it really does help create a nice shadow on a lot of different skin tones. It's a really nice color. My perfect color personally is MAC Shadester. I just recently found this like in the last year, maybe like six to seven months or so. If you feel like you haven't found the perfect shade yet, like it's all good. Some people use bronzer, some people use face powder, some people use colors that are specifically made for contour. Find what works for you and that's what you need. That's it. Just one good contour color and you're good to go. And then as far as brushes, there are so many. So I will just tell you my top two faves First off is this one right here. This is the Morphe M523. I love it because its longest bristles are in the center and then it has the shorter bristles on the side. So it gives you a nice line while still blending it out makes it nice and smooth. And the other one is the NARS Eda brush. I've been talking about that brush for years and even though I don't use it that often, every time I pick it up, I'm like, why don't I use this anymore? It is so amazing. It's so easy just to create that nice line, that sharp line. I'm going to just grab the shade Sir Powder by MAC and I'm going to put it on both sides of the brush. The reason why I'm putting it on both sides, not just one side, is because when I blend out, I'm gonna want it to be on both sides to help me get that perfect, smooth, blending, flawless finish. So the past couple of months, I have changed up the way I've done my contour and I've had so many people tell me that I've lost weight in my face and I'm like, no, I haven't. The scale would not agree with you, but I think it is truly the way that I've been contouring because I used to contour from the top of my ear down towards the corner of my mouth, stop right at the edge of my eye, and I would kind of round out a little bit like to give that round cheek look, which I still do go from the top of my ear and I still do stop at the corner of my eye, but now I just make that line very harsh. And I don't like using the word harsh because no one wants a harsh line on their face, but it's the truth. Instead of rounding it now, I have it way more angled and I just go and I make it much more cut as opposed to rounded out like I used to. So I'm gonna grab my brush. I'm gonna start right here at the corner of my ear and having face powder right here in the area where you're going to contour is gonna really, really, really help in the blending and smoothing out process and making it look more natural. So I'm gonna start right here at the corner of the ear and I'm going to begin just to work downward. And as you can see, I do not have a ton on my brush because I'd rather have too little than too much. And so in the past, I would have gone more like this, down this way, like that, but now I'm gonna go more up and down like this. If you can see that right there. Same thing over here, and just going down at an angle. And if you're rubbing off that translucent powder, that's fine, don't worry about it. You can go ahead and rub it off. You can do the translucent powder after contour or before contour. There's no rules in makeup whatsoever. And like I said before, if there were, I would break them anyway. But you can do your baking in the beginning or at the end. You can do whatever you want. All right, so now I'm going to go up on the forehead. And the reason that you want to contour your forehead, do not mind my baby hairs growing in. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. No, really, I don't want to talk about it. Um, but the reason why you contour your forehead is because now that you have added the shadow down here and made this slim in and you've added depth to the face, now it's just like, oh, hello, forehead, like so in your face. So all you're going to do is go to the hairline right over on the edges and you're just going to slim this out. If you have a tiny forehead, like a no head, then you do not need to worry about contouring your forehead at all. You can completely leave it alone unless you feel personally like, eh, it looks a little blank, it looks a little blah, it looks like people are gonna stare at my forehead, then you can contour it. If you ever feel like you're doing your contour and it's just not blending properly, something that you can do is go back with like your powder brush and your face powder and just get a little bit on that brush, not much, because you don't want coverage. It'll just help blend everything out and kind of going back over that and working your face powder and the contour powder together will make things look a lot more flawless and more natural. 
this contour line right here that's kind of sloppy and kind of unblended and needs a little bit of help, which I'm going to be honest, I just like slapped it on my face because I knew I was going to be baking it and cleaning it up. I'm going to grab a defined brush. You can also just use a makeup wedge like from the drugstore. You can get like a pack for like two bucks and just use any wedge that you have. Um, I'm just going to use this brush right here. This is the Morphe M459. This is a brand new one. I love this brush. If you watch my videos, you know I use this brush in every single video to do, to do this exact thing that I'm doing right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right beneath that contour. So that contour is right here, and it's gonna go downward. And what I'm going to do is stamp it out like that so that I am just helping make that line sharper so that it looks like a shadow under there. If you wanted, you could just grab a brush right now and just whoop, wipe it away and you will see a very noticeable difference immediately and it will clean up that contour. But if you wanna let it bake so that it doesn't move and if you're gonna be out all day and you want that contour to stay in place for hours and hours, then let that powder sit on the skin for five, 10, even 15 minutes and it will make it so that it's all day long. All right, so now at this point, I'm just going to wipe away my under eye area, this bakage, if you will and you will see that everything underneath the eye is going to look very flawless, very airbrushed, very matte. You can use a big brush to wipe this away, you can use a small brush to wipe it away, whatever you prefer. I am just kind of wiping away some of the contour that I got right here and blending it out because I don't really want contour on my temples because if you have contour on your temples, it'll kind of bring in your face. And if you want to have a more higher cheekbone and kind of look like your face is kind of wider and brought back up here, then you wouldn't want any contour right here on the temple area. All right, so now we are going to apply blush. And for today's video, I'm going to be using the face palette that I created with Becca Cosmetics. This is the Champagne Collection face palette. I'm so excited, I feel so cheesy. I haven't opened this up on camera yet. Ain't she party? To apply blush, I'm going to be using my personal favorite blush brush of all time, and this is the, I like how I don't have the numbers of anything memorized, the E4, it's basically worn off on mine. I absolutely love this guy so much. It is a synthetic brush, which I love, because I personally don't love using a goat hair for my blush. I feel like it just doesn't apply it the way I want it to. I love using a synthetic hair. Whatever you have, though, works for you. Whatever blush brush you love, that's what you should be using. Now for blush, I'm going to apply it on the apple of my cheek, but I'm not not gonna apply it too close to my nose because now that's gonna bring us inward and that's gonna give us a round face and we wanna keep this like sculpted face, right? So basically what I'm gonna do is you can smile and you do not want to apply the blush right here in the center of the face because you might look a little bit like a clown. So what you're gonna do is instead of putting it right here, you're gonna put it right here. I always angle my brush to the side like this and I begin to sweep my blush backward and upward. So I don't wanna put it down into my contour I kind of just bring it like this, up toward the temple, but I'm not gonna go all the way to the temple. You know what I mean. I always initially go in with very, very soft sweeping motions just to get the product on really lightly and evenly, and then I will swirl it around to make sure that it's blended and nice and smooth. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to highlighting, which, ooh, load is a whole video in itself if you ask me. There are different techniques in highlighting. You can do an all over highlight that's all over the entire cheek area. You can do a more specific highlight that's just on the center of the cheek or just back here on the high point of the cheekbone. You can highlight your cheeks and then apply blush. Doing that will make it look a little bit more subtle, a little bit more like it's kind of a glow from within if you will. Or you can do it the way I am and do contour, blush, and then highlight on top. You can use a smaller brush and make it more just in one area or you can use a larger brush and make it more of an all over glow it's totally up to you but you can kind of play around and see what you love on your face shape and your skin type so I'm going to be mixing champagne pop and Prosecco pop together champagne pop is more of a peachy light glow and Prosecco pop is a true golden glow so I'm gonna mix those two together and the way I've been highlighting recently is I've actually been concentrating my highlight on the center of my cheeks because I think that it looks the prettiest when I smile as opposed to back here when I have too much highlight on the tops of my cheekbones I feel like when I smile it creates like this weird like indention thing from straight on it only looks good from the side so I've been highlighting the center of my cheeks the most so I'm just gonna take it and just sweep it as I'm smiling right on the apple of my cheek and you can see right there <laughs> and then once I have it on the apple of the cheek I will just 
lightly go back over top of my blush. All right, so now if you wanna highlight the center of your nose, you can. I never highlight my nose, but I guess I will for that video. I don't like my nose, so I don't like bringing attention to it, but if you wanna put a little dink, you totally can, not for me, but it looks good on a lot of people. You can also highlight the chin if you want. This is something that not a lot of people are gonna to wanna to do, only if you are dry and you feel like your skin looks extremely dehydrated, you wanna highlight your chin a little bit. The top of the cupid's bow right here is a great place to highlight. I was like, great place to highlight. Um, recently, I've actually been highlighting my lips if I'm wearing a matte lipstick. I will take my highlight and just run it right over the center of the lips. Okay, my lips are chapped as hell right now, so that's not a good look. Hold on, let me redo that. Coming in 2017. Okay, das beta. You can even highlight the forehead if you want. Right above the brow is a great place. It will give a lift to the brow without looking too noticeable. Right there, a nice little shine. I like doing this in the summer because I think it looks really like, you know, summertime. So now I'm just going to wipe away down here. Obviously we are not going to leave the house looking like that so that you can see the way the contour looks now that that has been wiped off. You can see it's nice and sharp, but it's not so harsh that it looks ridiculous. This powder doesn't make it go away to the point that you're like, oh my God, like when you grab a piece of paper and use that to contour with, yes. All right, you guys, so that completes this step through, walk through tutorial. I don't even know what I'm calling this video yet. But thank you so much for watching. I hope that you really enjoyed and maybe you learned a little something. If you notice something different about me, I applied um, mascara to my lower lashes and then I also removed all of my eyeshadow with a makeup wipe. I literally stopped the camera and wiped off my eyeshadow because I rather have no eyeshadow than that hot mess, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't cute. Make sure that if you have any products that you love to create a flawless face with, leave that in the comment section down below. Let me know your favorite products, your favorite tools, your favorite techniques. I'm always looking to expand my horizon and my knowledge in makeup and learn new techniques and new trends and new things and new ways of doing things and new products and new brushes. Like, I absolutely love it. I feel like deep down I'm just like a 13-year-old little girl and I want to play with my mama's makeup. And I always appreciate everything that you guys do here for me, all the engagement that I have. I'm so thankful for it. You guys have inspired me so much to just be like the best artist that I could possibly be. And I'm so thankful for that. So I guess I'm just trying to say that I very much respect what you guys have to say here on my channel. And I'm just so thankful for it. So keep the comments coming. I will be down in the comment section, reading everything, checking out all of your guys tips and tricks. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.